Hey everybody, welcome back to Breakfast with Bob. My name is Bob Babbitt. We're here at the Challenge Championship and the Collins Cup, brought to you by Master Spas, Hyper Ice Form Smart Swim Goggles. You can Hoka One One Class USA, and of course, our Challenge Athletes Foundation. Our next guest, two-time Ironman 70.3 world champion, 2014 Ironman world champion, the daddy of the year, <laughs> Mr. Sebastian Kinle. <laughs> How you doing, Sebastian? Uh, I don't know about daddy of the year, <laughs> but... Of the week, of the week, yeah. What's the week? Um, I mean, like it has been difficult. I mean, <laughs> it has been difficult, but just on the sporting side, everything else in life has been really, really good. And um, yeah, you mentioned uh, I became a daddy at Fourth of July. Was it Fourth of July? Fourth of July, born at Fourth of July. Little Nino Kaimi, and yeah, Tina, my wife, is doing well and. Uh, yeah, we have uh, great support from uh, from her family, from my family, um, and therefore, yeah, it has been been a good time, but also a busy time. Yes, a little bit. And you are a captain's pick on what everybody looks at as this pretty amazing collection of, <laughs> yeah, of yeah, athletes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Jan Frodeno, Gustav Aydin, Patrick Lange, Joe Skipper, Daniel Bakkegaard, Sebastian Kienle. That that men's team is. When I look at the other teams, on paper, that's a, a really dominant team. It absolutely is. And I mean, uh, obviously, it was my plan to be a, be a captain's pick. Um, I mean, I've been in the top two or three in the, in the ranking for a pretty long time. But uh, yeah, I knew that there was a risk to, to lose some points when I started racing uh, this, this early uh, in, the, in, in, in the year. And um, I haven't been fully, fully fit, fully recovered for my calf injury after yeah. Challenge Daytona. So therefore I knew it's gonna be <laughs> it's gonna be tight and I mean I, there would have been pretty good picks. Right. Um, <laughs> as yeah. well. I mean we could have of course had the Olympic champion. Um, um, yes. Yeah um, as a as a captain's pick we could have had um, George Goodwin yes. as a captain's pick. Um, there would have been a lot of good options for sure. So, but yeah, I'm super happy to to make the team. And I mean, I have some some experience here in in Chamorin. Um, it's definitely a course that that suits me. Yes, and also the format I think uh, suits me pretty well. I uh, obviously nowadays the fields get then more dense and uh, it's becoming more tactical. Um, we're just three guys on the line, you know, so you it's a little it. bit uh, of a different story and also the bike course really, really fast. So, and when it comes to uh, power per aerodynamic or power per CDA, um, thanks to Scott, Zip and, uh, and Schwalbe, I think I still have a pretty fast setup for this course and can deliver something for Team Europe. So when you look at the other teams, is there anybody in particular you like to be matched up against, or does it matter? Um, I think I don't. I don't really care. I have to say, but <laughs> yeah. obviously uh, there there's a couple of guys um, that would be would be cool to to line line up against. I mean, Sam uh, Long would be would be pretty cool. He has been racing really really strong, yeah. and I think it would be a pretty tough ask um, for me. For me, um, but yeah, that would definitely be one of the guys I would love to to race against because also his uh, strengths and weakness profile is pretty similar. So yes, that might be uh, might be interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, how about how about Lionel? Um, you yeah, raced I him mean, a few times. <laughs> yeah, and he raced himself a few times this yeah, year. Yeah. And uh, um, yeah, I think uh, the team in the national came here with a bag of excuses. Um, same goes for the for the U.S. guys. Um, yeah, Lionel did an Ironman as a preparation. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> leading did, did leading Iron up to, the, to Collins Cup. So yeah, um, uh, yeah, it would be interesting uh, how he's doing this weekend. I, I don't think people quite understand this is this is such a unique thing and being here for the first ever Collins Cup, and this is something that you've heard Charles Adamo talk about for the last five years. And, you know, is this thing ever going to become reality? Is it going to happen? But I think this just watching what the PTO has done to help support the athletes over the last couple of years when the athletes needed it most yeah. was pretty impressive. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, like you said, um, there has been uh, 
it has been a lot of talk about the Collins Cup for quite some time. And now in the most difficult of times, yes. um, they managed to, to set it up. And uh, so therefore, yeah, I mean, when, uh, when everybody is canceling races um, and dialing back price money, mm -hmm. PTO puts money to the, to the athletes, um, puts races on the, on the schedule and puts an event up like this. And uh, I think that's that's proof that they uh, they're serious about it. Right. And um, I think every athlete who's here um, these days knows um, that this will change the the sport. And you know, you come here as an athlete, and I'm around for quite some time, and you really feel welcome and appreciated, and uh, it's a good feeling. And especially at that time, it makes up for. Yeah, um, for a lot of missed races in the last two years. Well, one of the things that hit me when we were down in Daytona and they had that meeting on uh, the, the, for the pros in terms of being a pro and being media savvy and that, you know, with the NASCAR guys and with yeah. PTO, I thought that was pretty important just telling people, listen, as a pro, you are a spokesman for the sport. You are an important part of growing the sport and you're uh we need you we need you to be successful right yeah. we need our athletes to be successful i thought that was a great message yeah absolutely i mean uh, as a professional you know there's a reason why you get paid and that's not just you race well you get paid that's not that's not how it works that was the old days <laughs> yeah you have to you have to bring something uh for the organization you have to bring something uh, for the event you have to bring something um a benefit for your sponsors and that's not just show up on race day and win the race no it's it's more and um i think it's important also to educate um the guys that they need to take matter in their own hands and grow the sport and grow the sport by being influential um mm -hmm. uh, you, you know um helping people to find a way to the sport but also yeah um represent our sport in a in a great way and they have the stage here to do that and i i hope um everybody knows what this means and um yeah realizes the the chance we we have mm -hmm. and show the audience a great race exactly so the difference when i look back at 2014 when you won the Ironman World Championships and today obviously the big change is, seems to be the bike just how fast people are, are, are riding the bike um, you uh, over the years a lot of the German athletes have, have, have dominated on the bike but now everybody is riding really really fast what what changed what was there a specific <laughs> moment where people were like okay We've we've got a uh, everybody's got to really step up here. <laughs> well, uh, I think a couple of people uh, watched YouTube videos of me. Um, probably. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, I I don't I don't want to say like uh, I I started this, but you were right I think, up there. I think um, if you look at some of the the analysis that has been done, not only 2014 but also. Before that, at 70.3 worlds, I mean, uh, it was quite obvious that it wasn't just my legs. It was the whole setup and everything that mattered and that gave me uh, an edge over the other guys. Right. And that's how, how sport works, you know. I mean, everybody is looking into every detail. And for me, it was quite shocking, actually, that it took so long for <laughs> some of the guys to realize uh, how important this is. Right. And... Um, yeah, so that's the reason why everybody's getting faster, but that's not the only reason. I, I think the main reason is we see the first generation of athletes that started with triathlon, you know, that didn't came from swimming and then become triathletes or something point. like that, you yeah. know. Um, we have the scholars programs and so on. You see, like, with the, um, with the sport becoming an Olympic sport mm -hmm. in 2000, um, in the Sydney Olympics, from there on, I mean, just not not only look at the at the bike splits, but look at the run times. Um, <laughs> I mean, back then, um, I think the men ran the times the women are running right. nowadays yep. in WTS 
races so um it's just it's just natural our sport is still young and it's still uh, still involving and it's great to see it's it's amazing how have you changed obviously <laughs> you shared a lot of that information and people are like oh okay i'm gonna start doing that too how have i'm you actually not sharing that much I information that. but it's uh, difficult to not um yeah i mean it, it with all the the mo um the 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 filming out there all the pictures and everything it's not that that yeah. hard to to get the point it's hard but, to hide um yeah i mean i've become older uh, <laughs> it's uh, it's kind of crazy to to think about it but um i still feel like um you know the young guy and yeah <laughs> um the youngest in the in the field in kona but i'm not anymore and um yeah of course you have to also have to adapt to uh, to uh, to the to the new w way of racing right. um i think maybe i become became a little less aggressive in uh, in some races um that's due to the fact that you know it's not that easy to break up a whole field on the bike anymore right um the fields are too deep yeah it they're is. all too good yeah and because the the bike split are getting faster and faster it's even more difficult to ride away because you know um it's physics it's not uh to to ride another 1k faster you have to invest like 25 watts more or 30 watts more which yes. is taking definitely a huge toll it's like flying with the afterburners on you know at one point the 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 tank is empty you know <laughs> and um yeah um other than that uh i think i i haven't changed that much <laughs> so with kona being moved back to february and we hope it happens in february uh how does that change the rest of your season yeah um i mean is it good because it gives you more time to take care of your injury yeah um for sure i think it for me i was definitely one of the guys who wasn't uh too concerned about uh, that change of date right. i mean obviously i'm really hoping for it to take take place now in february but yeah. um yeah for me uh, it might be uh, might be a benefit because um i was just starting to gain a little bit of momentum the achilles is getting a little bit better but then on the other hand you know uh running out of time you know i mean <laughs> it's uh it's the second year now where you see that and you're not gonna gonna harvest you know i mean and at one point i think i'm gonna bite in a sour apple you know um because um watching watching the whole uh the whole tree fall apart again and <laughs> the apples getting rotten <laughs> it's not it's not nice so we'll we'll see i mean but first, now it's Collins Cup, and that's great to have this event, and then we'll see what's going to happen next. Right, because yeah, so the, there's a lot of there seems to be a lot of races in the U.S. still happening at this there's point. There's still there's still options. There's yes. definitely options, and I'll like I said, I've, I mean, I'm definitely going to take one of those options for sure. Very cool. Um, as uh, as a daddy now. Does it change your approach to this in terms of, you know, more cycling yeah. indoors? Obviously, it's, you know, it can be scary out there riding outdoors. So is it, uh, does it change the way you approach this and the way you train? Yes, it does. Though definitely the way I'm moving on a bike outside. Yeah. It's not I'm, I'm not des descending slower or something like that, but just, yeah, being more careful. Yes. Right with a... With a with the light and um, uh, stuff like that and being a little bit more afraid um, for sure um, but then it also changes other things you know like I'm I can't you know I can't fuck around anymore <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> no it's um, yeah you can't just go out for rides for the hell of it you've got to have a no. real purpose for each yeah, workout absolutely I, I realized that it's like you know before before uh, the birth of my son you know it's you train and then you get bored between the training sessions and uh it's eat sleep and train and uh waiting for the next training session and now it's different like i have a sense of urgency you know i mean it's i know there's not too many more chances at one point yes yeah and um 
you also, I mean, yeah, uh, you, I, I'm definitely more motivated. <laughs> I can say that. So is there, uh, obviously you won Ironman in, in 14 and the two seventy point three titles. Is there a race you look back on as, is most, you know, the most important to you, a race that told you something about yourself that maybe you didn't know? Oh yeah, um, plenty, plenty of races. I mean, for sure, becoming 70.3 world champ in 2012, I think um, it's, there's, there's just one first time, you know, yes. and um, uh, after that, obviously, you have more expectation, the outside has more expectations, and uh, there's just one first time where you have this feeling um, of surprising yourself, um, doing something amazing where you probably would not be 100% sure you're capable of, you know, um, and after that, it gets more difficult for sure, sure. <laughs> yeah <laughs> because the next time you show up um second place is already not as good as the last time you know and therefore uh, i mean the old saying staying on top is more difficult than, than getting there yeah. is definitely true yes um but also being here in chamorin you know um winning the race here 2019 I, I had a really bad day on the bike. You know, I struggled a lot. I got overtaken by Andy Dreitz. I could still remember it was like a close flyby. You know, I nearly <laughs> got blown off the bike. <laughs> Never happened in my whole career like this. You know, I mean, that I get passed on the bike like that. And, ah, oh, I mean, I, even on a long course race, I didn't have that much of self-doubt. And, uh, and, then, and then I run myself into a victory. And um, that showed me what I'm capable also on the run. Right. And I, even with all those, these issues I had and now again have, um, I realized that I haven't reached my full potential, especially in running. And, um, and after that, I think I had some pretty good runs. Yes. Um, 70.3 World Championships in, in Nice mm -hmm. 2019 was yep. really good. And um, it's great to, to, know, to know that, that you don't have to win the race on the bike or that you do something crazy on the bike, otherwise you would not win it. Um, yeah, it gives you a little bit more confidence if you're behind in a race. You still love it? You still love the whole process of getting ready for, getting ready for a race and the, the butterflies in your stomach <laughs> the morning of a race and the whole, the whole, whole process of it? Yeah, it is... Um, you know, it's interesting because in uh, at the end of 2019, I definitely sensed like some sort of fatigue, packing my bags, you know, I'm doing this all again, you know, like putting the alarm at like 3.30 <laughs> and, uh, and then knowing what's coming that day. It's, um, it was kind of, it became routine, you know, and it became... It felt like work, <laughs> almost like, you're like a dreading nine it, to five right? job, yeah, um, yeah. flipping burgers, you know, <laughs> something like that. And then, uh, um, but even in that training camp where in in spring of 2020, when I when when the shit hit the van and yeah, you get. and uh, South Africa got cancelled, I mean, I was almost crying because I was so. Uh, I was so looking forward to to this trip and right. to the to a new race and everything and then I think that's maybe the positive thing about the whole covid um, situation is that I realized I still love it. Yeah, and we we need to be grateful. I'm the same way. I've been racing every weekend for yeah. the last month yeah. and it's like yeah. it's it, there's nothing better than being in a transition area in the morning and having the butterflies in your belly and it doesn't matter if you're in old slow guy like me or to top of the game like yeah, you it's, being, it's just just being there and and being around um the athletes that's yes. a great thing with uh, collins cup you know um because it brings together not only the best guys on long course racing but you can also meet yeah. like the guys you know from watching tv short course races and and so on so it's it's just it's just great and i think that's also something what I realized, what I absolutely love, is just the lifestyle that comes along with, with our sport, yeah. 
That's the best. Sebi, thank you so much for taking time. Thank it's you always an honor to get to chat with yeah, you. Yeah, hope, hopefully we chat, chat again in, in February. Uh, and, yes, uh, we have Poncho Man with us. Yeah, <laughs> that would be awesome. And um, yeah, you guys out there, uh, have fun watching it. I think um, there's plenty of opportunity to, uh, to watch the Collins Cup, support our sport, um, support triathlon, especially in these times, really important. And help our Thank race you. directors out. Yeah. yeah. The Collins Cup dot com. Check it out. And uh, Sebastian Keenley has been our guest. Hold on, everybody. We will be right back.